All right, we've got our drawers built. Now it's time to install our drawer slides. But before we do, let's dissect one of these just a little bit. It'll help. Come on, you can look over my shoulder. All right, now what we're using here is a KV brand drawer slide, but there are a number of different brands of drawer slides on the market and they're all good. Uh, this particular drawer slide is a soft close, self close, and all the mechanism for that is back here at the back of the drawer slide. So let's take a look at that first. Now, the first thing you'll notice when you go to open the drawer slide is it's a little difficult for the first inch, inch and a half. And part of the reason for that is because we're unlatching from the self-close mechanism and we're charging a spring. And that's the spring that's gonna close the drawer. So now as we close the drawer, let's take a look at what happens. There's a little notch right here and there's a little button on top of a lever here. This little button is going to enter this notch, it's going to go down a little bit, and then it's going to go up. And as soon as it goes up into this area, it's going to release the spring and pull the drawer closed. Just like that. You want to see that again? Just like that. Pretty slick, huh? When you're working with drawer slides, it's good to know a little bit of the nomenclature. Let's open this up again and take a look. This particular piece, you'll notice it's flush on the top and it has some holes in it. This piece is considered to be the drawer side piece. That's what gets mounted to the drawer. Everything else is considered to be the cabinet side part and that gets mounted to the cabinet. So let's take a look here at how we release this. Now, what we'll do is we'll open this, and then let's take a look over here on the back side. Some of these drawer slides have a lever. This one has a little push button. You simply push that in, and the drawer side of the slide will come out. And this is what it looks like without the drawer side of the slide installed. You can see the ball bearings here, and as you move this back and forth, you can actually see the mounting holes in the back on the cabinet side of the drawer slide, okay? Now, on this particular slide, because it is a self-close, soft-close, and this mechanism is, I wouldn't say it's fragile, but it certainly can be broken, they actually recommend that you snap this up, let that retract, and push this in by hand while you're mounting your drawer slide. That gives you freedom of movement of this piece and it protects this part of the mechanism. Then when you reinstall the drawer slide, the drawer side of the slide into the mechanism, it'll come down and catch this just as it did before and snap into place. And now, it's ready to go again, just like that. All right, in order to best demonstrate the installation of drawer slides, I've mocked up a cabinet here that's partially constructed so that we can see what's going on. I built a face frame and I built basically a cabinet but left off about two thirds of this wall. I didn't install a back and there's no top on it. So we can get some light in here and we'll be able to see what's going on. Now, the first thing that we need to do is we need to take our drawer and confirm that we have sized this correctly. And if you'll recall, the tolerances are very, very tight. So we need this dimension here to be exactly one inch or a half an inch on either side. And that is exactly what we've got maybe a 64th extra, and that's going to be okay. The most important two considerations 
in installing mechanical drawer slides is first, parallelism. These need to be not closer together at the back, not closer together at the front, not out of parallel either direction, but absolutely parallel with one another. And they need to be perfectly level, not going up, not going down, but perfectly level with the cabinet. Now, there are some jigs in the market that are available to help you accomplish that. This is fairly typical of one of those jigs. There's a magnet here to hold the drawer slide. The drawer slide rests on a rail here on the bottom and shoves up to a little plastic nubbin here on the end. And then, ostensibly, you can clamp this into place and get a straight drawer slide installation. Unfortunately, in my experience, this just doesn't work very well. Um, several things I think can cause this to be problematic. Number one, the face of the slide is the only thing against the edge of the face frame. Therefore, you could be, I'm exaggerating this for the video, but you could be at an angle like this or an angle like this off just a little bit, not enough to really tell until you start to install the drawer. The other thing is, is that the area for clamping by necessity, because you've got a drawer underneath here, is really small. So this can allow this to move a little bit and get you out of position. The other thing is, is this is made out of plastic or I think they call it a glass filled resin, but it's basically plastic and it has some flex to it. And you go to put in a 22 inch long slide, it's a pretty heavy slide and it can certainly flex and it's only being held here in about a 10 inch space. The other thing I don't like about this is the thickness of this ledge elevates this slide a quarter of an inch off of the lower rail and this nubbin back here on the back that indexes the front of the slide actually sets the front of the slide an eighth of an inch back from the face of the face frame, even though the directions for the slides themselves tell you that on a face frame installation to mount this flush with the face frame. And I definitely prefer a flush mounting. So I don't use the jig. I've never had much luck with it. I just do it a little bit simpler. And the way I do that is to use essentially a shim. And what I do is measure from the inside side of the cabinet to the inside edge of the face frame. Now normally I would measure that up here, but I have this cut away for the video. So I measured it down here and it measures 15 sixteenths of an inch. So I cut a piece of stock 15 sixteenths of an inch wide and I put it in here just to verify that when it's up against the wall of the cabinet, it's flush with the edge of the face frame and it is. So then what I'll do is I'll just clamp this in the back even with the edge of the uh, rear frame, which would be the inside wall of the cabinet. And this inside edge of this shim is going to exactly space this drawer slide the same as the inside edge of the face frame. That'll be very clear when I start to do that. Now, by the way, you could normally just make your shim say six inches long and just use some blue painters tape and attach it wherever you were putting in your slide. But because I don't have a wall over here, I made this long enough to go down and sit on the floor of the cabinet to help hold it in place. So when we're ready to go, I'll just put a clamp here and then we'll set our slide in here, flush to the bottom of the rail, flush to the side of the style, flush to the inside of the shim, and then all we have to do worry about is getting it level. These drawer slides come in even inch increments, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, etc. They don't come in odd numbered lengths. And the cabinet that I mocked up here is 13 and a quarter inches inside from back to front. 
So I'm using a 12 inch long slide. So in order to make this work, I'm gonna use this rear mounting bracket snaps on. You can see there are a number of mounting hole options here, and this just snaps in like that to the slide. And then all you really need to do is just put it in here and get it pretty much to the length that you want. That's pretty close right there. And you're ready to go. So I've clamped in my spacer or shim, and that's gonna give me a level dimension this way. So we know we're gonna be parallel to the side of the cabinet, parallel relative to the face frame. And when we do the same thing over here, this one will be parallel to this one. So the front of the slide is resting on the bottom rail of this drawer opening. All we have to do now is get this level. All right, so the first step, first thing I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and remove the drawer side piece. And remember this particular slide, it's a push button. Just push that in, that'll slide right out. And then, like we looked at a few minutes ago, I wanna push this little button up and let this retract so that this is in all the way. Then all I'm gonna do is lay this here. I'm gonna flush it up to the front. You can use a little piece of wood to make sure you get that exactly right, or you can just do it with your fingers. And I wanna hold that pretty much as level as I can get. And then I wanna move that front piece so I can get access to the hole. And then fortunately my Festool bit is magnetic, so it'll hold the screw. All I gotta do is just put the screw in there, center it in that hole, and drive it in. All right, now my drawer slide is mounted in the right position this way and this way, but we wanna make sure that the back is perfectly level. How are we gonna do that? Well, we're gonna do it real simple. What we're gonna do is we're gonna measure up to the bottom of the rail, and that is exactly 13 and a quarter inches, and I'm gonna cut a stick 13 and a quarter inches long to put under the back side, and then screw in the back mounting plate. That simple. All right, so now I'm gonna snap on my rear bracket. I'll extend it till it's flush with the back, where it's gonna get screwed in, and I'll take my little stick that I cut, make sure that the slide is resting on that, and I'm gonna put in a screw. And this drawer slide will be installed and perfectly located. Just that easy. All right, so now the next step is to do exactly the same thing on the other side, and then we'll test it out. All right, now I've put my shim spacer stock over here on this side. I've got this clamped in. Just remember that if you're working on the inside of a cabinet and the back is already installed, you won't be able to clamp that in, but it's not a big deal. It's not holding anything. Just use some blue painter's tape and that'll hold this up flush to this wall. I've removed the drawer side bit of the slide, and all I've got to do is just position this here, get it at some semblance of being level, just approximately, line up the access hole, and put in a screw. Okay, now with that screw installed, I can line up my little height stick, push this up to the spacer, and put a screw in the back. And we're pretty much good to go with those pieces. So take out the height spacer, and this, I would undo the blue painter's tape, 
and slide my little spacer stock out. Yeah. Okay, so our two drawer slides are installed on the cabinet side. Now it's time to install the drawer and that's going to be really easy because we're not going to use any jigs or anything. We're going to make this real straightforward and simple. All right, a little quick story here. Um, one day after finishing putting some laminate on a top, I had some leftover that I was about to throw away and I decided to cut it up into small pieces. And I actually have a Ziploc bag full of these things in different sizes and shapes and they make kind of perfect shims. They're about a 32nd of an inch thick and one side is a little rough so it doesn't slide too well and the other side does slide well and they're just really good shim stocks. So what I've done is I've taken two just because I want about a 16th of an inch of space and I'm just going to tape them right here to the bottom of the rail of our face frame. And that's just to give us a little space off the bottom of the drawer so the drawer doesn't hit the wood when it's sliding back and forth. I'm going to pull this drawer slide out a little bit. And now all we have to do is just put our drawer in. And I like to put it in somewhere around halfway so it's semi-balanced on its own. And then just pull the drawer slide cabinet side piece out so that it's flush with the front. Then I'm going to take a level. This is just part of my starette combination square. And I'm just going to level that up. Make sure this is even with the front of the cabinet. And put in a screw. Okay, and then I'll do the same thing over here on this side. And make sure this is pretty level. This right now doesn't have to be perfect, but you want to get it pretty close. All right, now with those two front screws in, what we're going to do is we're just going to pull the drawer out a little bit further. And now we want to make sure we get our level perfect. So I want to level that. And I'm going to go to another screw hole here and hold that level and boom, that screws in. Now I'll do the same thing over here on this side. Hold this level. Maple's pretty hard stuff. Okay. So now we can still put one more screw in, but right now our drawer is installed. That's very nice. Okay, so now that this is installed, what we want to do is we want to come back here to the back and we want to put an additional screw in on both sides. That seems to be in good position. And we're going to pull this drawer out all the way. And we'll put another screw here at the rear of the slide that attaches to the drawer itself to make sure that that stays nice and level. And our installation of our drawer is done. Quick and easy. Well, as you can see, you don't need any fancy jigs, just a couple of scrap pieces of wood, a couple of careful measurements, and maybe a couple of pieces of shim stock and you can install these drawers quite easily and you can get that nice fluid smooth self-closing movement without a lot of aggravation i hope you enjoyed this video thank you for watching i look forward to seeing you in the next installment mm -hmm.